Hello, everybody. It's Dave Neal, stand-up comic and host of Bachelor Nation News. And we have some of the greatest contestants of all time in the Bachelor world reliving some of their darkest moments. That's right. Caitlin Bristow shares her darkest moment, those are her words, with Nick Vial. I mean, listen, you hate to be a part of anyone else's darkest moments here, but she was recently in Ireland and shares... Uh, uh, the uh, sort of reliving and retracing her steps through a tough time in her life, that being when she had sex with Clay, uh, excuse me, with uh, Nick Fiel uh, in her season of The Bachelorette. She also shares moving into her new mega home and how it can be difficult and lonely to do it yourself, but how she's taking joy in the process. Follow me on Instagram at dneals, patreon.com slash Dave Neal for behind the scenes bonus content. I'll be live at 10.30 a.m. this morning. We'll go over the afternoon rush hour podcast and share some new tea and new developments coming in from the Clayton Eckert paternity case, Bachelor Rush Hour hit podcast this afternoon. All right, so I'm going to share with you guys this clip from Nick's podcast, which actually was his first episode, and it's where he shared what it was like to get dumped by Caitlin. But let's go to Caitlin in her discussing moving into her new place following her breakup from fiance Jason Tartik. With a fiance or a husband or a boyfriend, like moving in, it should be so exciting. And then I was like, actually, you sure that those feelings are valid, but also how cool that you did this on your own. And that you're choosing you and then you can build a life around it. This, I got to read something. I have this beautiful, I don't know what do you want to call her, life coach maybe? I want to read something that she wrote. I was having a lot of emotions leaving my old house because I just built such a life there. And I think a lot of people associate like, well, because I've talked about it. You know, I had two relationships in one house. It was time for some new energy. I started my podcast in that house, you know, like I've so many things started in that home and I was having a lot of emotions around leaving it. And this girl, Courtney, who is a godsend to me, <laughs> said, name your fears. What can you hear in your head? And my fears were that I was going to regret spending so much money on a new home. I was scared of the growth. Like, you know how we feel so comfortable in our own safe place doing something new and moving on to a next phase of your life can be really scary and my fear was that I maybe don't deserve it and I couldn't believe I was saying that out loud because I know I do but you know that voice what do I call her Katrina I don't know whoever the little bitch is up there telling me lies is telling me like maybe I don't deserve this really nice house maybe I don't deserve the next chapter of my life where like I don't know I don't know why I do that to myself. I'm sure. So she, of course, talks about the fact that she does deserve it and everything she got from The Bachelor and all the edits and all the things that came from that chapter in her life has provided her this house and this opportunity. So, you know, she says you have to name it and expose it. It's actually interesting because Jason Tartik is saying the same thing where he says name it to drain it, right? All right, well, let's go to the 545 mark. Here's where she starts talking about her darkest moments, reliving them and overcoming them. It appears that Caitlin's in a pretty good place. Now, look, obviously moving sucks. I'm a about to prepare to move to to Nashville and uh, uh, moving it, it, it unearths a lot of feelings right all of that metaphysical and physical baggage that we have uh, all of the clutter we've thrown under the rug and all of the things we didn't want to deal with and address they they get taken out of the closet and you need to take inventory in your life and it can be a very emotional time but it's a new beginning and here she talks about new beginnings and also overcoming dark moments got to go out there and it was just so i think i said this on instagram it's so therapeutic to go laugh in the places you cried i had one of my darkest darkest moments in ireland and it sounds silly because being removed from it now and seeing what's going on in the world, I'm like, that was your darkest moment. <laughs> Sleeping with another guy and regretting it. Welcome to the world, Caitlin. Love it. And by the way, Caitlin, you know, was a little hesitant to start these solo episodes. She calls them solo dolo. But I have to tell you, if anyone can pull it off, it's Caitlin. She's very good at just talking to camera, making her audience feel like they're in the same room as her. And I think it's a, ve I think it's gonna be a very big. No, 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 no offense to Nick Vial, right? He has a podcast with seventeen producers, thirty-two sound engineers, a partridge in a pear tree, and that works too. But uh, to go solo really requires you to pull things out of your heart. It's funny that she mentions the darkest moment in her life. Uh, 
uh, was when she had sex with Nick Vial. She said, what was I thinking? Caitlin Bristow sobs after having sex with Nick on The Bachelorette. She sobbed uncontrollably on Monday's episode. Again, this is back in 2015, after she apparently spent the night with widely despised contestant Nick Vial. Who wrote this thing? The 29-year-old dance instructor had a steamy date with Nick that led to an invitation back to her hotel suite. Caitlin said it felt so great at the time, but she later dissolved into teary hysterics when she saw how jealous Sean Booth had become. Hey, that's that's what makes the show so interesting, right? Is uh, you know you got to you know everyone's everyone's uh, attached to your decision making. The crew had just landed in Ireland when the pretty brunette bestowed her first date on Nick in a move that angered the others. He makes me feel like a woman, a desired woman. She beamed to the camera. Caitlin and Nick during their Dublin date avoided pigeons in the park due to her bird phobia and danced a little jig in the street with traditional Irish step dancers. There's Nick, uh, you know, and him and Caitlin obviously look very different eight years later. Hey, we all grow up folks. Either way, let's continue to what she had to say about that dark moment. It was so dark in that time because you're so isolated on the bachelor and bachelorette that all, all you think that matters is your relationships because you're not watching TV. You're not reading books. You're not on social media. You're not talking to your family. You're not talking to your friends you're not you're not in your normal world you're in a bubble where all that you're talking about eating sleeping breathing is your relationships and when you're up left right and center which i was doing <laughs> it becomes a lot and after that night in ireland in dublin i woke up and i remember calling one of the producers and saying i'm in a really dark place i'm not feeling good about this can you come talk to me no cameras well what did they do sent a camera down to the what do you call that foyer i don't know yard in ireland camera looking up at me he mic'd himself up came out onto the balcony and said let's talk about it. how you feeling and then they aired it those sons of bitches and you could be mad and say that that's wrong but i signed my life away for that show and i'm still grateful for all of it because i wouldn't even have this house if it wasn't for that show so again feeling the 13 feelings gratitude fear anger frustration excitement nerves all the things. Anyways, clear. So very, you know, very nice at the end of the year, you know, before that we wrap up the year to look at all the things this season and this year and this part of our lives that we're grateful for and try to expand on those things. You only get challenges in life because you're meant to overcome them or you're meant to learn a little bit about yourself. If we didn't have adversity, like one of the worst things I think you can give to like your kids is, you know, unlimited wealth, unlimited uh, um, uh, 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 protection from adversity. And that comes in different ways. You know, if you're the dad or the mom who like, like holds your kid's hand through life, they're going to expect through tough times to have their hand held. Caitlin Bristow is a God dang national treasure. Uh, she, uh, you know, talks about overcoming these demons in Europe, in Ireland, and then finds herself in a business opportunity eight years later goes back to Ireland and stands in the same bars, in the same places, and relives these moments and champions them and overcomes them. Where would she have thought she was eight years ago and where she would have never imagined she'd be going? Now, Caitlin and Nick are on the top of the totem pole in Bachelor Nation. Very interesting, after uncovering that story, to come over here to Nick uh, and this uh, uh, people... Uh, uh, what is this four-year-old article, Nick Fiel, on what really happened with Caitlin Bristow before, during The Bachelorette. So very interesting stuff here. And this is from his premiere episode, which has become a wildly successful podcast. And here he is talking about um, getting dumped by Caitlin in that moment. So they both, you know, have learned and grown from those experiences. They've both um, found a lot of success in their content creating world. And, you know, it's one of those things. Sometimes every once in a while, it's fun to look back and see all the moves they've made. Very publicly. Twice. Okay. Um, what what, what was the harder dump, Caitlin or Andy? Uh, in the moment? Yeah. It's hard to say. They were very different. The one that was more personal was Caitlin. Because Whoa. it was confusing. Because you guys had had sex. Well, well, everyone knows. That was the same with... Andy. So he's now saying, no, I had sex with Andy too. And Andy. Oh, that's right. Uh, no, it was more personable, personal, sorry, because of um, 
the relationship before and all the things that happened leading up to it. Yeah, I got to just I got to get this not for once and for all. What, what well, how how did you get on Caitlyn's show? Uh now if you remember on Caitlyn's season, he came in like episode 3 or something after having already flirted with Caitlyn beforehand. So all of the cast members thought it was an unfair advantage that he just strolled in. I mean, he showed up. He showed up. But why? I believe in New York. Well, right? I mean, everyone knows at this point that like, Caitlin and I uh, had chatted before. I mean, I haven't mm-hmm. like I haven't uh, shied away from that on the phone or just on like like FaceTime. Okay, yeah. I mean, I think, and I've mentioned this before. I think what ha- I, I was she was on Christmas season. It's halfway through the season, and the the Chelsea girl, the one with the dead husband with the beautiful oh, story. Lord. You remember her? Yeah, of course. And I was so like enamored by that story i actually messaged caitlin on on twitter and i asked her is she for real you know mm. and so that's how that that see was broken it kind of snowballed from there okay. and then we and then she kind of started messaging me questions and things like that about you know and we related on that on that front in terms of uh we both went far in the season yeah. and uh, in our respective seasons and then um and then we just started talking every day all day, day. Um, Every day, then, how far was that before she knew she was going to be the Bachelorette? Well, when we first started talking, she didn't know at all. But the season had finished. The season had finished, but you don't find out till yeah. till later. I mean, and even then, I mean, every season's different in how the producers approach their next lead. Um, but it really, those conversations really don't happen until later on. It's not like you get done filming and they're like, "Hey, just so you know, you might okay. be the next lead." Um, they they want to see how things play out. Yeah. Um, but, and that was a season, if you remember, that there were two bachelorettes. Yeah, Brett. Yeah. So when they, we were, had been talking, and I remember, I remember when um, she found out, and she was really upset. But she thought she was going to be the only one? Or well, no? Oh, no, because no, they went just, on Kimmel. They, they just, they That's just, right. uh, yeah, when they went on Kimmel. I remember everything, um, Nick. She was throwing, yeah. Um, anyway, so, so, yeah, I'll get to that. I mean, like, listen, I haven't really talked a lot about what happened just because Caitlin's always been in a relationship with Sean at mm-hmm. the time. But now they're not. No, they're not. So like basically we talked. She, I remember when she was asked to be the bachelorette and she called, I was in New York at the time. Mm. So you like, she called me and she was all upset. She's like, you know, and upset because it was, well, do I do this? There's a, that's a huge risk, right? If you get at, there's two bachelorettes and they're like, Hey, night one, you're gonna get Oh, poor Brett. But oh, I'm just saying, but was... there's a huge like ego. There's a huge risk to the ego, right? To like, I could sure. do this, but what if, you know, so she yeah. was afraid of that. And, and I was like, well, you got to do it. You know, like how long had you guys been vibing? Like three weeks at that point. Okay. And then, so were she, you bummed? She, what? Were you like, uh, yeah. I mean, I, you know, at that point she was just kind of a friend. Right. And then we okay. were kind of going down that path of like flirting, flirting. and, and, and talking kind of ridiculous things. Um, and then that kind of snowballed when she went on Kimmel. Um, I remember her texting me and just being like, "Hey, make sure you watch." I was like, "Okay." And mm-hmm. she was like, "I'll throw you signals. I'm going to keep touching my lips with my fingers." I was like, "Okay." And so she did that. And if you go back, and it's not like if you Google the. Now, did you had you had any conversation like maybe I'll come be on your season? Well, no, we we would joke, and she mentioned this. Uh, if she would always be like, "You should come on the season." And at the time, uh-huh. I was like, "There's no fucking way I'm ever going back on." Keep in mind, at that point, my only experience in The Bachelor was being vilified on Andy's season. Oh yeah, that was bad. I didn't have the like. I was back at work. I was like, "There's just no way I'm going back." And then, you know, she was, she did the whole like Kimmel thing. And it was like, at this point, I'm like, there's this girl I'm crushing on who's going on Jimmy Kimmel and throwing me these like signals or whatever. Um, and then she, like, I remember texting her and she's like, they're taking my phone away. Oh my God. Um, I think this is goodbye. I'll email you. Like, and we had like these songs that we would Do like, they really take your phone away? Yeah, they'll like at any moment. Well, I think what happened is uh, Reality Steve started releasing some of the men. Um, so at that point she was filming her like uh, right you know, like her b-roll and, and her packages and they're like she's like oh my god they're taking my phone away and then that night she snuck and, and called me from her hotel when we had like our goodbye conversation and i was how like did that go it was like whatever but i remember no, how did it go we, we were both like well i feel like saying something crazy but i'm not gonna say it. like what did you want to say well we were like like we were, i really i have really i love yeah. you no it was more <laughs> like i think i'm like i think you're like great you know it was like it was stuff like that oh, right okay. um it was kind of this puppy love thing but we oh. uh, you know caught up in the moment and the like again the whole the big x factor was there were two bachelorettes and i remember saying to her maybe she won't get like, picked. i'm I, like i'm gonna be honest 
I hope you don't get picked. I hope you don't get picked. Yep. And the thought was, if you don't get picked, she, you're going to fly to Chicago and come visit me. All right. So then he continues to share the story about how it all started. We watched it. He got on the show and made it to the finals and lost. Sean Booth, Caitlin Bristow won. They broke up. Caitlin Bristow interviews Jason Tartik for her Off the Vine podcast. They start dating. They get engaged. They recently break up. Nick's got a baby coming on the way with his now fiance. Wow. Life comes at you fast, folks. Well, there it is. There's your power recapping of Caitlin Bristow sharing the darkest moment with Nick Vial and a little throwback to a simpler time back in the mid 2010s all right folks i'll have more content coming your way don't forget check out bachelor rush hour the hit afternoon podcast we'll be covering dancing with the stars recaps uh vanderpump rules we've got so much other stuff going on we'll cover it all over there and we'll be back right after this